Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're going to go over some of these safety switches, where they're located and how to check them to make sure they work, how to remove them and how to reinstall them. This one's going to be the hardest one to show you because it's underneath of my snapper. So I might as well start with this one. Now I'm going to be jiggling this camera around to get different angles, so take some Dramamine, you might need it. <laughs> Let's pull you up here. Okay, this is a safety switch that goes on your clutch or brake pedal that's activated by the little spring that's on your yoke. This one is a dual switch. It is normally open and normally closed. To check any of these switches, all you need is a voltmeter with a continuity setting on it. Or you can buy one of these. It looks like a flashlight with a wire on it. That'll work too. I don't know if you can hear this thing when it beeps, but to check these switches, all you got to do is hook your meter up to them. This meter has uh, different probes you can put on the end of it. These particular ones are alligator clips, which are kind of handy for this. This half that I got it hooked to is the normally open. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's how you test them and you hook it to the other side, it's going to beep constantly until you push the button. And like I said, all the switches are activated and tested the same way. There's a couple of them that's a little tricky to get out. Um, Let's see, this is the wiring harness we'll be putting back in. <laughs> kind of looks like a half an octopus. Uh, this is the plug that goes to your seat switch. This is the plug that your interlock, this is the brains of this whole nightmare safety switches. This is the brains for the new style. This is one of the old styles. It just kind of reminds me of a pop bottle cap filled full of tar with a couple wires stuffed in it. But for 50 bucks, I hope there's more to it than that. And the same with this. You can see the contact strip on the front. Just when you plug it in the socket, it, it makes connection. Now, when you plug this thing in here, there's locks on the side. These have to be spun. Both of them at the same time have to be pulled open on both sides. This is a handful to get out. How to test this to see if it's good or not? I haven't figured that out yet. I have a viewer. I know this one's good. I have a viewer that has one that's bad. And he's hopefully said he was going to send it to me so I could compare the two to find out how to test them to see if they're any good. Now your safety switch, the old style machines, before they came out with these switches to put on the yoke, they had a switch that went on the shift lever. I can get you over here where you can see it. And when you pull the lever away to shift, it lets the button out on this switch. This machine did not have one, but I dug one out to put it on this machine so I could show you how to get it out. Now all these switches are about the same. They all have these little fingers you have to depress to get out. The only problem with this switch, you can get to the top one you can't get to the bottom one. So you have to take a knife 
and get underneath of that finger and push down on the top one and it slides out. If you've ever wondered why you have this funny little shaped hole here, that's so the switch and the two prongs can slide straight through the hole and snap in place. This switch is tested the same way. There's so many of them on here. I, I believe this one is normally open. We'll find out in a second. Yes. This is a normally open switch. You know, I could hang this meter. I have an amp probe on here. You lock that around the wire when a machine is running and it'll tell you how many amps the machine is drawing for replacing fuses. I'll hook that right around the stand and maybe you'll be able to hear it a little better. Now, like I said, this is an old style. Most of your newer machines are not going to have this, but they're still going to have this funny little hole stamped in this shift plate because, hey, why change the die? Dies are extremely expensive to manufacture. So once they have a die made that's going to bend and stamp that plate out, why change it? Your solenoid. Let's tip this thing down. To test a solenoid, I had a, <coughs> excuse me, had a lot of people that have had trouble with their solenoids. The, the machine's not starting. How, how do I check to see if it's working? Well, you got to put a meter on it. Then you have to hook it to a battery. I've got a small battery here. Uh, let's hope it's still got enough voltage in it. If I can find some wires to use. We're going to set this thing on here. You can hear the solenoid clicking. Why the meter's not buzzing, I'm not sure. But you can hear it's clicking back and forth. That is a good solenoid. I'm not sure why it's not. I couldn't tell if that was buzzing or not. This is the original battery out of this machine. I don't know if I'm going to replace it or not. It seems to have, I don't know if it's going to have enough voltage to turn the starter over. It's not buzzing for some reason, and it should, because I know this is a... I know that's a good solenoid. So maybe we ought to grab one off the shelf. I'll be right back. Okay, I guess it is buzzing. I have too many years in a shop, I can't hear anything anymore, I guess. But you can hear it buzzing. That's how you test to see if your solenoid is any good. I had one viewer that was just going around in circles trying to figure out why his machine wouldn't start, and that was the problem. Now when you hook these up, you want to ground this to the frame of your machine. And this lug there's only one on this style. It's got one lug. This goes up to the ignition switch, so when you turn the ignition switch on to start, it sends 12 volts back to this lug, and that will close the contacts and start your engine. 
some of the newer styles when you buy them will have two lugs on them and it come with a short wire you put the short wire on either one of them lugs and put it underneath the screw head when you bolt it to your machine that will ground it out then you hook your hot wire from your ignition switch coming back to the other lug and that will complete the circuit when you turn your switch on now seat switches I finally figured out how to get this switch out and it's not easy so I want to show you if you have to replace your switch again to test it we're gonna hook this up now you can hear that I hope this switch is normally closed when you sit on it it opens the switch it takes a little effort pushing on that heavy seat now to get the switch out again you have to push these fingers in and push down on the switch but you can't get the switch down far enough I'll show you the little tabs I'm talking about the tabs have to go up here above this entire finger to get it out and out of the hole. And the only way you can do that is you need a screwdriver. Now inside of this switch, or I should say inside the seat, there's a piece of metal that acts as a spring. It must be spot welded up here somewhere. You have to push down on that hard enough to get that switch through the hole and out. I hope you can see this. Push the fingers in. Now I'm going to get it back as far as I can with my screwdriver in the way. Then you have to put the screwdriver behind the switch and push down on that tab again. seat wants to run away from me. They are not easy to get out. These are the little tabs I was telling you about. This little piece that's sticking out right there. You can see it's sticking that way and this one's sticking in this way. You have to get this entire switch down. Well, it's mounted in there like that. You have to push down on it far enough to get that tab to slide through above this finger or it won't fit. It's not easy to get in and out of there. putting it in should be a little bit easier. Why they made that so hard? So you have to take it to the man and pay him to switch out your switch for you. Let's set this back up here. Now, the last switch we have to check is the one on the mower deck. And that's sitting over here. If I can get you up high enough to see it. Take this cover off. You got four bolts. You'll need a 7 16 wrench to take out. And the switch. Well, I'd like to stand this up, I guess. Maybe I can. Now, 
Now, if I can get you up high enough. It's back over here. Now you can see it. This switch is held in with one bolt. All you have to do is take that out, and the switch will come out. Now to check this, you want to shift the mower deck in gear, and let me tip this up. I use a clamp to hold the pedal down so it stays in gear. We're going to throw this clamp right over here. That will keep the switch open. Now, drop my lead on the floor. The wire for the switch is right here. These connectors, I need the pointed probes. So we'll take the alligator clips off. And we'll put the pointed ones back on. And you can shove them right up inside of here. Now this switch is also normally open. When you have the mower deck down, it activates the switch and tells the interlock that the deck is not engaged and you can start the machine. Now I've had a lot of people ask, can you unhook all these stupid safety switches and just be done with them? And yes, you can, but it depends if you have small kids at home, if you have grandkids, neighbors, anybody that may be using this machine, I strongly suggest that you buy a new switch and put it in. If your machine is not starting, and Lord, I do this all the time because I am not used to this machine. <laughs> You have to push the brake pedal all the way down and push this lever over. That is also your parking brake. These machines, when they're shifted into a neutral position, that's what it is. It's neutral. There's no uh, parking brake on these per se, like the old style, like my 33 inch. I put that in neutral, and on the tail of the chain case, there's a ball. And when you shift that in neutral, the chain case goes all the way against the drive disc, but it doesn't contact the drive disc because it's landed in the center hole. So that allows the chain case to swing far enough where that ball hits up against the rubber drive disc or clutch disc and that locks up the differential in the chain case and that's your park but when you're going to start these machines and even if it's like this one over here this one is for sale everything's fixed on it but it is strictly a pull start so you have to push your brake pedal down, set your parking brake, get off of it, and then you can pull the rope to start it. If you have this set up the way it's supposed to be and your machine don't start, the first thing you want to check is the solenoid. Them have more of a tendency to go bad than the safety switches just because it's running on DC current. DC current, every time you break a contact, it arcs. And when it arcs, it burns. When them contacts, especially in these solenoids, because they have so much current going through them, they'll burn bad enough where when they go to touch together, they won't make contact anymore because of all the carbon and the surface will be extremely rough from all the burning and they just don't make good enough contact 
or they don't make contact at all to send enough amperage back to your starter. Starters, you could have a battery like one of these with 14 volts in it. I went over this before and zero amperage. When these batteries get bad, they lose their amperage, but they could still have 14 volts in it. So if you check your battery, one of these things, it ain't gonna tell you a thing. It'll say, oh, I got 14 volts. I should be starting this machine, but no, it won't. So the first thing you wanna do is check your solenoid. Or I guess I should say the first thing you want to do is take your battery out and have it tested at an auto parts store. I've shown my battery tester several times. It's a big shiny steel thing with very large wires that clamp on the battery. You throw a switch and it puts a load on the battery just like the starter would. It has a needle on there. And that needle should stay in the green area for however many amp hours this battery is. If it doesn't, the battery's junk, even though it's got 14 volts. I'd check that first. Then I would check my solenoid and make sure that's working right. Then just go through and check all your switches. You've got one on your seat. Now you don't have to take it out to check it. You don't even have to take the seat off. You just tip the machine up, pop the wire off. This is the wire that hooks on to your seat switch. It's got a little finger sticking down. You just bend that back and pop, pop the plug off. Check the switch. If that one's working, Go to the one on your clutch pedal and check that. And remember, that one has two sets of contacts. One's normally open, one's normally closed. You want to check the switch on your mower deck. If that's bad, the interlock, our little brain, is going to think the mower deck's engaged. If you're sitting on it and your feet's on the machine, what difference does it make? Well, this little interlock doesn't know that. You may have one foot on the ground, so that deck has to be a neutral. If you've got an older machine with a switch in your, in your shift plate, like this one, check this one. They're very simple to check. It's just a pain in the butt to do, because us as humans thinks, why do we need all these safety switches. <laughs> well, if you get in a hurry, <clears throat> all you got to do is forget to do one thing and get off that machine and you could be injured. And I would hate to have any of my viewers injured because I told them, just disconnect this stuff. I have told a few to disconnect and when I get the engine on, I'll show you what I'm talking about on the magneto shorting block. That's what the book calls them. Whether or not you have a magneto or a coil. Most all machines today have coils. Uh, the magnetos, I believe they needed points and a condenser to make the engine run. These new machines, they don't have points and condensers anymore, thank goodness, because they were a problem. You had to pull a flywheel off to file the points or sand them because, again, it's DC and the contacts would get burned. Your engine wouldn't start. So you pull the flywheel off, you sand that a little bit, put it back together, and it start right up. A lot of people got really good deals on lawnmowers because the owner didn't know that. So that's about it on switches. The next video, hopefully I'm going to have the engine up on top of the machine. That's sitting back there on the floor. And for me to pick it up and put it on the machine when the machine's on the floor is no issue at all. But now the machine's on my bench and I got to lift this thing 
above chest high and it's 70 pounds. Come on, I'm old. <laughs> and I don't want to scratch the deck all up or the, the top of the rear case trying to get the thing in place. So I got to go get my neighbor and have him give me a hand. So I guess that's it. Next time we will be rewiring this thing. I've got a couple couple wires I'm going to put on along with this switch that is not factory because I put a headlight on all my machines right here. I found these nice aluminum die cast LED lights that are super bright and they don't take any power to run like the headlight I've got on my old machine. So you don't have to worry about draining your battery by running the headlight. These are really nice. Uh, I think they're like 29 bucks. I got this one from Tractor Supply. Well, I get them all from Tractor Supply. I put probably five or six of these on different machines. Real easy to put on and wire. I don't wire them into the ignition switch, which you can because there is a lug on the back of this switch that is for a headlight. I put a switch, I mount this switch just above the throttle control on that plate that sticks out from the side of the machine. I'll be showing you that when I get to it. Another thing uh, we're going to be mounting on here is, uh, it's around here somewhere. I tell you, this place is really a mess. <laughs> I can't find one right now. But that's going to kind of be a surprise. I had a viewer contact me and say, hey, I just got my machine all, engines all rebuilt, machines all rebuilt, and I'd kind of like to keep track on how much I use it. So he came up with this idea. He sent me a link. I ordered two of them. I'm going to put one on my machine. And as I do that, I'm going to tell you how to get a hold of me to win the extra one if you want to put it on your machine. There's a couple different places you could mount it and I'll show you how to wire it in. Yes, it is an electrical part. More wires. Oh Lord. <laughs> no safety switches on it though. So hey, you're good to go. So remember, please subscribe. It's going to help me someday if I get enough subscribers. I got like 7,070 subscribers. If I hit like 35,000, I might actually get some money out of Google. So uh, it's it does cost to run this. Not as much as some people, they have full-blown productions. I'm trying to keep it as simple and cheap as I can. So if you've got a friend that's got a snapper, tell them about my channel. Ask them to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. And if you've got a friend, share a video. I figured out how to do that the other day, and it's not all that hard. <laughs> and I guess until next time, work safe, have fun, enjoy it, keep on snapping. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. So long.